Since we are approaching the new year, I wanted to take a moment and talk about an important topic in JavaScript. And that is what we can each do to keep learning about the language. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Now, something I enjoy more than teaching about JavaScript is learning a new JavaScript concept or finally grasping something that I couldn't comprehend before. Those are a couple of the reasons I started this channel years ago. It helps me to keep learning new things. Now, I want to take a few minutes and talk about some of the things I do or that I think are important to do in order to keep learning about JavaScript. And hopefully these may be of help to you. So I have four what we can call habits, I guess, to help keep learning JavaScript. Now, the first one is to involve yourself in the JavaScript community. Now, obviously, JavaScript is huge, so its community is huge. So you can't involve yourself in the world community, but there are a lot of smaller communities within JavaScript that you can involve yourself in. Uh, for example, this YouTube channel, that's involving yourself in JavaScript community. And there are other YouTube channels out there that you can follow and learn from. Uh, something that I've seen done before in places where I've worked is that each Friday, a group of developers get together and share something new, maybe something they've learned or or someone's in charge of presenting something or something. You can do it around lunch, and uh, it's a great way to get away from coding for a while, and it's a great way to learn something new. So all of the developers that you work with are part of that JavaScript community as well. There are many ways to participate in the JavaScript community without having to know or be a really good JavaScript developer. For example, recently there was a call to fill out the state of JavaScript survey. That's a survey that's done each year and it provides a lot of useful information. The more people that participate in that, the more accurate the information is. And you can find out about that survey simply by Googling state of JavaScript survey. And I would encourage you to take that. So another way to be involved in JavaScript community. Some of the other sites that I contribute to or like to follow. Reddit is one. There are several subreddits that have to do with JavaScript. One of those that I think is pretty good is the Learn JavaScript subreddit. I like to see what questions are out there and see if I can contribute to them at all. So I think that's an important community. Medium has a lot of articles on JavaScript and I usually follow those Comments can be made on those. It supports the authors that are put, putting together those articles. I think that's a great way to be involved. And of course, Stack Overflow. It's a great place to ask questions, but you can also contribute there as well if you have something to add. So my recommendation is to get involved. Now, when you first get involved, you may simply be consuming the content. And that may go on for a while, but eventually you'll have ways you can also contribute as well. And so recommendation one or habit one is to involve yourself in the community somehow. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Habit number two is invest in your learning and keep investing in your learning. Now this investment may be time, it may be money, it may be both. But what I like about investing in your learning is if you put forth something, something that costs you, then you're more, you're more likely to dedicate yourself to learning because there's an expense associated with it. And anytime we have an expense, I think we dedicate ourselves better. So some of the ways which you can invest in learning is to take a course. And if you're interested, I have multiple courses that are linked in the description. I have to put a plug in for that. 
you can read a book on JavaScript. That's actually one avenue I like a lot. I have so many books on JavaScript and I just like to see the perspective of different authors and also the things I can learn from different authors. And, and to be honest, that comes from courses as well. When I've taken courses, uh, different teachers that have done the courses have a different perspective and I can learn from them. Something else you can do is attend a conference. That's a great way to get away and still invest in your learning. So maybe there's a part of JavaScript you don't know well. Well, identify that and then invest to learn that particular part. Habit number three, and I think this is an important habit, and I call this answer your own questions. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, now that doesn't mean that when you have a question about JavaScript, you don't go looking for answers or you don't ask others what the answer is. You still need to do that. But what I mean by this is once you've discovered the answer, don't stop there. Or even if you can't discover the answer, don't stop there. Take some time to set up some code that will help you find the answer or prove the answer. I think that is one of the greatest ways to learn about JavaScript is thinking through a problem and thinking, now how can I set some code up that will help me answer this, that will help me see what JavaScript is going to do in this type of situation. Just the process of doing that is a learning process. So yes, you're still going to look for the answers to those questions, but also take the time to set up a way for you to get your own answer to whatever question you're trying to solve. Now, habit number four, and that is to challenge yourself with JavaScript problems. Now, this may seem similar to habit number three, uh, but this but this is different in the sense that those challenges are coming from others. They could come from yourself. For example, you could decide, all right, I want to try to do this in JavaScript, and that's your challenge. And you jump into it and try to figure that out. But what I was mainly thinking of with this is there are a lot of sites out there that provide JavaScript problems. You can simply do a Google search on JavaScript problems. You can find a number of different locations that provide problems that you can work through. Just the process of working through different challenges can help you learn. Now, many times within our own work environment, we have challenges. We run into things we haven't had to deal with before. And those become the challenge that we work with. And those count as well. I don't mean to exclude those. But sometimes we may be on a particular project or something, and we're really not learning a lot new. Those are the times to look for some other challenges out there once in a while just to keep yourself fresh and learning new things. So those are four habits that... I think are important to keep learning JavaScript. All of these will force us to learn more and force us to, come, to become better at the language. Now, I hope this simple discussion was helpful. If so, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. Also, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would also appreciate the support that way. For a certain level of support, you can get access to all the code files I use. You can also contribute by visiting my website. And you can follow a link for both of those in the description. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.